How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Maverick Designs Woodworking Shop. My name is Tom and today we're going to talk about burning or torching wood. Okay, so if you've seen my how to make the American flag crosses video, when I got to the point where I was going to torch or burn the wood, however you want to call it, I call it burning, I hear other people call it torching, it's all the same. But anyway, when you get to that point in the video, I make some comments that uh, I have quite a bit to say about how to do this and my tips and tricks and techniques for getting the style of burn that I get and you know, what I think about other styles and, you know, just, I had a lot to say about it. And if I had left it in that video, which was already like, f I think 40 minutes long by the time I got it edited, it would have added at least 20 more minutes to that video. So I decided and, and mentioned in there that I was going to um, make that into its own video and release it right after that one so that anybody that wanted to see how I do my burning or torching could see it and I could give all of those tips, tricks, techniques and <clears throat> not make that video an hour and a half long. So I've got some examples here. Um, these are just a couple of projects that I'm currently working on that aren't finished. This is an American flag coat rack. Uh, it's done except for the hooks that need to be installed. And this is one of my concealment uh, key boxes for you to hang your keys and stuff on. But uh, I brought these out here because I wanted to use them as an example to show you what the burn looks like the way that I do it. I actually use this burn as a finish. It's my favorite finish because I don't have to put anything on it besides lacquer, which I love lacquer. And that's a whole other thing. But, um, you know, I get this beautiful finish that you see on these simply by burning the wood and then putting the lacquer on it. And I don't have to use any stain or poly or anything else. Uh, if it was going outdoors, obviously, that would be a different situation altogether. But uh, I'm, what I'm going to teach you today is how to achieve this kind of a burn. Now, there's a couple of different kind of woods that you can use. And I've got some examples over here. I don't have a lot of construction grade dimensional lumber around right now. But um, I'm sure most of you have seen it before. You know, typically it can come with like very rough for one. Um, lots of cracks and knots and um, streaks of discoloration and not you know a very consistent grain pattern and it can be really challenging to work with now if you want a very very rustic and i mean a very rustic look and some people like that this is what you probably want to use i don't like that i like it to look a little i like it to look rustic but a little more polished rustic so what i use is clear pine um, or select pine as they call it in the box stores but um these typically have no knots very clear consistent grain patterns that look really nice they're s4s or, or surfaced on all four sides they're um, dimensional they come in the sizes that you want to use them in and these are typically the sizes that i use for these things so that i don't have to do much cutting i prefer just to cut things down to size on the miter saw than to you know be ripping boards for long periods of time on the table saw but uh, anyway, I prefer to work with this stuff for a lot of different reasons. One, because, you know, when I use this stuff, it requires a lot more time and effort. Not only um, just selecting it, because I spend like hours sometimes digging through piles of this stuff at the store, trying to find the ones that have the, the least amount of knots or that, aren't, or that aren't warped. I mean, half of them are warped so bad that you can't, they're unusable. But uh, so there's a lot of different criteria that I look with when I'm selecting these and I'm very picky about using them. And I'll, I'll go through stacks of two, three, four hundred of these and walk away with 20 sticks, you know, enough to do a couple of flags. And I'll go from store to store doing that. And man, you know, typically I don't charge for my time when I'm doing stuff like that. Otherwise, these things would be so ridiculously expensive that nobody would buy them. Or you just pay a little bit extra and get the good stuff. And it saves you time. You find you just find the ones that are not warped. I mean, typically I'll go and I'll find a lot of these, and you know, five out of twenty are going to be warped, and you just don't take those. And you know, it's not hard to pick these out because they all look really nice. Um, you know, they're more expensive than the construction grade stuff, but at the same time, 
you know, it's all cut very cleanly and finished and planed, and it's just, it's really nice. The, the, this stuff is really rough and rounded edges, and you know, I mean, you've seen two by fours and things. I mean, you have to do a lot of extra work to get them to look nice. Or in this case, I make the some flags out of this because it gives them that extra rustic look, and you know, some people like that, so I do make them like that from time to time. But when I do things like this, furniture, um, any kind of furniture, including concealment boxes or you know coat racks or whatever I use this stuff because it just looks so much nicer and it's so much easier to work with and when you burn it you get this nice beautiful consistent looking burn that you see on these and you know it, it doesn't necessarily come out that good when you use it on these it can and and I do get it to look really nice on this stuff but you know there's a lot more sanding involved and it's just you spend a lot more time working this stuff than you do working this stuff. I mean, that's the, the bottom line here. So I recommend you use this stuff if you can. If you're going for that extra rustic look, use this and do what you need to do to get it to look how you want it to look. But the techniques and the type of burning that I'm going to show you will show you how to do all of that. Okay? I mean, it's the same techniques, but you know, it'll give you the, the best look you can get similar to this. In all actuality, this... I think, I think this was, I think this was dimensional construction grade lumber, just regular um, one by fours, and this one was the slate pine stuff. You, if you do it right, you can't really tell the difference. This one maybe a little bit. It's not. It's probably not quite as consistent as that is, and you know, it's um, more variation in the wood grain, but that can look really nice too. But you got to realize that I'll buy an eight foot stick of this stuff and I'll cut little pieces like this out of it and, you know, I'll end up burning a lot of pieces that have big old knots and things like that in it. And I'll specifically go and pick these things out for those spots of nice areas that I know I'm going to cut out of them. And it's just super time consuming. It's just, to me, it's almost not worth it. I, I almost always use this when I can, um, unless I'm really trying to save money or I'm making something really rustic or... Like I said, when I make the actual flags, the large flags, I tend to use the construction grade stuff just because it's cheaper and, you know, I don't want to sell those things for 200 bucks because nobody's going to want to buy them. But anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's do some burning. And uh, this is all footage that came from that other video, so you might see some overlap or you might, um, well, you're definitely going to see me burning the stuff from that video. But uh, uh, I was talking as I was doing it, and I'm going to just cut it in here now so let's get to it okay so I got my stuff set up here to start my burning um, just kind of a quick talk before we get started about this I've seen other guys on YouTube when they do this they just you know burn the wood on top of stacks of other wood or they'll burn it on the table or they'll burn it yeah, holding it in their hand I mean there's lots of different ways to do it um, I don't feel like any of those are very safe I had a project that I did a couple of years ago in, the, in my front yard where I bought a bunch of paver stones and I kept a few of them. And so typically what I do is I will get some of these and use them to put the wood on top of when I'm burning because obviously stone will not burn. And that has worked out well for me. And I think that's probably one of the safer ways to do it. So just letting you know that uh, you probably shouldn't burn wood directly on wood. These things have a tendency to get really hot. And I like to burn the edges a little extra, which we'll see here in a minute. But uh, sometimes I'll get embers on here that I don't notice. And um, I've never had a fire, but I could see, because once I burn them, I put them into another pile of burnt ones. And I could definitely see where that could potentially start a fire if you're not careful or you're not paying attention to what's what's going on with your wood. So just keep that in mind, you know, this is not a really difficult process. I don't think it's inherently like crazy dangerous, but uh, if you take the right precautions while you're doing this, just be safe, be cognizant of the fact that, you know, you're working with fire here and wood, which is combustible, obviously, and you should be okay. And also I have fire extinguishers um, all over the shop. I've got like three of them. One of them is like right here next to me, actually. So uh, that's something else I would recommend. Keep a fire extinguisher close by so that if you do have something that comes up, you can deal with it immediately. 
It's another thing that I like to do before I burn these things is, is I don't know how well you can see this. There's still fine sawdust all over these like that. Um, when you go to burn this, that can cause issues in, in the burn because obviously you're burning the little bits of sawdust or the little piles of sawdust on top and not so much the stuff that's underneath. So when you go to clean it off later, if that's what you do, you'll see some uneven burning. And as you're about to find out, I don't like uneven burning. Some people do. I like mine to be nice and even across the board, uh, which I'll talk about in a second. But it's very difficult to do that if you have a bunch of sawdust on your boards. So typically what I'll do is I will use either tack cloth or I've used a damp rag before too. Either way works. Uh, if you use a, just a damp rag, that'll get the stuff all off and it dries within a couple of seconds of you wiping it. So, you know, or, you know, obviously the fire will dry it immediately. So it's not a huge deal. The pieces are small enough that you don't have like crazy warpage issues or anything like that. But tack cloth works really well. So that's what I use for doing that. Okay, so what I use to burn this stuff is I just use a regular burn somatic propane tank. Now, burn somatic also has those yellow ones. I'm not sure. It's a, it's a different, uh, it's not propane, it's something else. And my understanding is it burns a little hotter. Some people like to use that. Uh, I don't find it necessary. It costs a little bit more. So in order to save money, I just get these and then I have a burn somatic uh, torch that goes on top and it works just fine for what I use it for. Uh, if you're burning something much, much bigger, obviously you, you, you know, that's, that's a small flame that comes out of there. So, you know, some guys burn very, very large things and you might want to get one of those big, like roofing type torches in order to do that because, uh, you, you'll get more surface area burned in a shorter amount of time that way. So it's, all right. So, uh, I'm going to wipe this down real quick. Set it up here. What I do is I try to set it as close to the edge as I can because if you set it back in here, um, it's very difficult to get the bottom burnt all the way because it'll, I don't know, it kind of shares, the flame kind of splits between the stone and the wood. Um, this particular stone is kind of beveled at the front so I don't have to hang all the way off the edge. I can just come close to it to that, get over that bevel and then it leaves a space there. And then when I'm burning, I can get all the way across the bottom. All right. I'm going to start this one. Um, actually, let me start too by saying that there's lots of different ways to do this. Uh, and in my experience, because I've done a lot of these, you want to burn as vertically as you can. Okay. And the primary reason for that, it burns just fine this way. But I have a lot of trouble with the propane tank when I put it on an angle like this to burn. It, it'll, it'll, uh, go out on me. It's, it's like, I don't know, the gas doesn't come out evenly or I don't know. And I have, I just have lots of trouble with it that way. If I keep the can as vertical as possible while I'm burning, I don't have any problems. And, uh, I can typically get every ounce of that propane out of there before I have to change to a different can. And when I, as opposed to doing it the other way, um, it'll keep going on and off and on and off and then I'll switch cans. And then I'll realize after the fact that, man, I still got a bunch of propane in there. And that's when I realized what was going on. So I exclusively burn horizontal, you know, keeping the, the can vertical now. Just a tip. All right. So the idea here is, for me anyway, is I start on one end and then I go across evenly at, a, set at the same speed. And you'll get your speed adjusted as you do this. You'll get used to it. It's kind of like riding a bike. It's something that you perfect after you practice over and over again. And that's the way I'll do it in lines just like this going back and forth now you know some people prefer a very very light burn some people prefer a very dark burn and i have used dark burns before just depending on the application and what the project is uh, and i do put dark burns on the edges which i'll show you in a second but um i like a more you know midway medium type type of a burn on mine some you know i watch other guys on youtube that do this they do it very quickly and, you know, they'll get burn spots like splotches on there. And uh, they may like that. And a lot of people that they make their stuff for must, you know, might like that. But again, it, it bugs me. I like it to be nice and even all the way across. I like it to look kind of natural that way. 
as opposed to you know a splotchy burn. So I don't do it that way. Um, I I always have likened this to it's like painting, but you're painting with fire rather than paint. So the faster you go, the lighter the lighter the burn is. The slower you go, the heavier the burn is. And you just got to kind of figure out where that where that speed factor is for you as you're doing it. And, uh, you know, most of the time I won't get it perfect in one pass. I'll get it a little too light and I'll go over it. And, you know, you get some splotching sometimes and there are techniques to overcoming that and blending it in with the rest. So, for example, anytime, like, let's say I do this and I have a, a, a white spot here in the center. What I'm not going to do is go to that spot and try to darken it to the rest of it because that will darken it overly so to the point where the rest of it it doesn't it doesn't look right it looks like a dark blotch um what you have to do is you have to start from the end again you always start from the end and you go at a faster speed until you get to that spot and then you slow down a little bit and then you speed up again as you go past it and that blends it in nice and it looks good um again it just takes practice uh it it's not really super difficult to learn how to do it's just muscle memory you after a while, you get used to doing it and, you, you know, just if you get a bunch of scrap wood and just spend a couple hours burning it, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's not super difficult to do. All right, so like I said, I'm going to start on the end here. Move across. See, that's a little darker than I normally like, so I need to speed up just a little bit. See? how it's nice and dark and even all the way across but in this side it's a little bit lighter than on that side so what i'll do is i'll start over here i come quickly and i slow down a little bit as i go through there and it catches all up and everything looks the same now you're going to see this these little white spots like this show up occasionally and what that is is you're burning the wood right so when as you burn it the moisture in this case it's pine the sap from inside will work its way out and you'll get little spots like this and it's, it's unavoidable, there's no way to fix it. You just have to, you know, deal with it and live with it like that. And it's, uh, it's usually not a problem. So uh, sometimes you'll get a lot of them and that can be problematic if you have a particularly sappy piece of wood. But what I do in that case, that's why I do the sorting again afterwards and I put all those together so it looks like that cross all came from the same um, wood and it all looks very similar all the way across as opposed to having everything all nice and even like this and then having one piece that's got a whole bunch of these little white things on it so that's that so I'll just flip it over and we'll do the other side now we do both sides see now there I just did a pass and I did nothing right I went a little too fast so I'll just go back from the other side and do it again and you just adjust your speed as necessary as you're doing this to get the results that you want. And like I said, if you want some parts of it to be a little bit darker, you just go over them and again, adjust your speed. Um, on this, we have to do all four sides of these. So let me flip this over and do this now. Be careful when you touch this when you flip them over because, I mean, you just burned it. It's hot. And I have burnt myself on occasion. Okay, so here's another thing that pops up from time to time. And I'm glad it did so that I can show you what's going on here. This is particularly irritating when it happens. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can get it closer. You'll get little spots like this. This one's not that bad. I'm probably going to leave it alone. But uh, sometimes it can be pretty bad. And this is basically oils from your finger from when you touch this getting onto the wood. And when you burn it, it uh, burns differently. And like I've seen my whole fingerprint on there before. And the only way that you can do that is to sand that whole area down. And typically I'll sand that whole side back down again, whichever one it is where I have that issue. And then you have to reburn it. That's the only way you got to get rid of those oils from there. This one's not bad enough for me to do that. So I can leave it that way. The rest of it looks okay. Here's another little spot with a similar um, thing. But again, it's very, very faint and you can barely see it. But uh, you will get it. And that's why, I don't know if you noticed, normally when I'm handling these, and I didn't do it when I was separating them, 
so I'm probably gonna have issues now uh, is I usually wear gloves when I'm doing it and that's the reason why I wear gloves when I'm sanding or anytime I'm handling these things before I burn them for that reason all right I'm gonna get to burning the rest of this stuff now and you can just watch well real quick before I forget we still have the ends to do um, and the edges and I'll talk about that here in a second but what I do with these is same thing just burn them I'd like to get these a little bit darker and I try to see how that caught on fire I try to get these edges a little bit extra burnt let's see why when we go do this later um, typically you only need to do this on the side that's gonna be on the front but I don't know which side that's going to be at this point. So, the way you do that is you get this this side done, and then you change your angle and you get a little bit on the on the edge here towards the top to get that little bit of extra burn there on the the very edges of the wood. The reason why I like to do this is because it, when you put everything together, it gives you this effect, like on this flag here, where the edges are darker than the center, and it's just, I like the way it looks. And the last thing to consider is that you do have some control over how dark or light the burn is. It's not going to be quite this dark when it's done. Uh, I do give these a very, very light sand by hand. Um, and the only reason why is because they're, you know, this is, you're charring the wood and you're leaving carbon residue on it. And, you know, you could probably do it without, you know, taking that off. But I like to just take the, the very top layer of that loose, loosest stuff off of there and it lightens it up a little bit. Now, if you have a piece that you burned a little bit darker than you would like to have burnt, you can just sand it a little bit more and take a little bit more of that stuff off to, till you get it to the point that you, uh, you like the way it looks. And uh, I will caution you though that while you're doing that, you should wet it from time to time because you don't really know what the wood's gonna look like after, uh, after you put the finish on it unless you get it damp or, or something that, and then it you know shows you the true degree of darkness that it's going to be but man yeah that came out great i like that that's going to be my a side for a white stripe all right now i'm just going to get busy doing these without talking and that's going to wrap up this video on torching or burning tips tricks and techniques my next video on stains and staining is also additional footage from my how to build American flag wooden crosses video. So check that out too if you're interested. If you got anything out of this one, please consider subscribing to support the channel if you haven't already and select all notifications on that bell icon to make sure you get notified when I post a new video. There are a lot more build videos coming as well as a shop tour. So if that interests you, you know what to do. As always, thanks again for watching, stay safe, and happy woodworking. I hope to see you on the next one.